A lot of people have been asking me for a fur painting guide for Procreate. I've seen quite a few digital fur videos on YouTube, but none of them seem to get it quite right. I've had loads of experience painting fur with traditional mediums, so I thought I'd share with you how I do it digitally using my iPad Pro and Procreate. For the purpose of the video, I'm just using the brushes that come ready loaded into Procreate. The first step is the base coat. I'm just using a circle here to demonstrate, so it's just a little bit neater. But usually I would block a dark wash to remove the start white of the canvas, then block in some dark colours of the fur. It doesn't really matter what colour you block in with, I usually try to use a warmer colour if I want a warm painting, and a colder colour if I want a cooler looking painting. In this case, I'm painting leopard fur, so I'm starting with a dark yellow brown colour. I'm using the basic acrylic brush, keeping the brush quite large. I add a few subtle colour changes just to add variation and also to plan out where I want the lights and the shadows. I'm still keeping everything relatively dark here though. As it's leopard fur, the next step is to add the spots, using the same brush but slightly smaller. For the purpose of this video, I'm just making up the spots. If I was doing this properly as a painting, I'd be trying to match the position of the spots to my reference photo. At the minute, the spots look like they've been stuck on top of the base layer. This is something that I see in a lot of beginner work, and what we want to do is make sure that the spots actually look like they're part of the fur, and not just a last minute addition. Fortunately, with digital painting, this is really easy to do. I set it to smudge, and I use the short hair brush that's the brush from the Touch Ups Procreate brush set. I carefully blend the spots slightly, just a little bit, into the base colours in the direction I want the fur to go. I make sure to blend in both directions so that the spot fur overlaps the base coat and some of that base colour overlaps the spots. This is actually where a lot of videos end. They'll be like, the secret to realistic fur is this special smudge tool. But we can get so much more realistic than that with just a few more steps. Next, we're going to use the fine hairbrush and up the size a little bit. We're going to use a dark brown and start to place some darker hairs over the fur in the direction that we want those strands to flow. In traditional mediums, I would do each strand with a single brush stroke but digital painting means we can get this step done so much faster by putting multiple strands down with each stroke. We then need to soften this slightly. It's, it's all a little bit sharp. I use the flowing hairbrush and choose a slightly lighter colour, somewhere in the middle of the value range, and start to add in a few more solid clumps of fur over the top of those black lines. I then lighten the colour again and repeat the process. When painting fur, it's important to focus on three things. Start with the clumps of fur rather than single individual strands. Make sure to leave gaps between each stroke so that you can see some of the layers underneath. This gives the impression of depth and makes the fur look more 3D. And then vary the length and the curvature of the clumps with each stroke. You don't want everything looking too uniform, like a comb has been used. You want the fur looking wild and full and natural. At this point, still using that flowing hairbrush, you want to come in and refine the shapes of the spots using a black or a very dark brown. Again, this is so that we can make the spots look like part of the fur and not just stuck on. We need to make it look like some of the spot dark fur is overlapping the lighter fur, and some of the lighter fur overlaps the spots. Go back to a lighter colour next, and repeat the process of adding those clumps of fur. Make sure to leave those gaps, slightly vary the length, and follow the flow of the fur that you've already put down. Then, I just repeat this another time with an even lighter colour. The good thing about these digital brushes is that you don't have to paint every single individual strand. Even though you're just painting the clumps, because of the way that the brush is made, 
it still gives the impression of a few of those thinner strands within those clumps, which just adds to the realism in a way that's very difficult and much more time consuming to do with traditional painting. Next is something that beginners always forget. It's really easy to do, but massively improves the look of your fur. The spots at the minute just look like soulless black holes. We need to give them some form. We can do that by choosing a mid-tone grey-blue colour and just adding a few strands onto those spots in the areas that might be being hit by light. That simple step really makes those spots pop and gives them that 3D form that adds a completely new dimension to your fur. There's only three quick steps left. The first is adding shadows. With traditional paints, I do this by glazing, but with Procreate, I add a new layer and switch to the Soft Blend Airbrush tool. Really, any airbrush tool will do. And then paint with the airbrush in the areas that appear in shadows. Then once I'm happy with that, I change the blend mode of the layer to Multiply. I turn the opacity down slightly, and both of those things allow me to darken the fur, but keep the details and some of the variations in colour from the previous layer. I then repeat that step with the lights, adding a third layer and choosing a lighter yellow colour, paint the areas of fur that are being lit up, then set the blend mode of that layer to Overlay. You can then adjust the opacity of the layer until you reach a point that you're happy with. Now we've got details, shadows, and highlights, there's only one last thing to do, and that is to use the flowing hairbrush and a very light yellow colour just to add a few loose strands of fur in varying directions to give it that wild, natural, and more realistic look. You might have seen in one of my earlier videos how adding a few of those loose strands can really make the piece look more dramatic and make your fur look way more real. So you can see, you can achieve pretty realistic fur with the basic brushes that Procreate provides. But based on how I work with traditional brushes, I actually created a brush pack that is so much better suited to painting different kinds of fur. Here you can see how I'm reworking that fur using my own brushes and in my opinion the result is better than with the basic Procreate brushes. But I mean, you can be the judge of that yourselves. If you'd like to try out those brushes, my brush pack is available on the Studio Wildlife website. I'll pop a link in the description for you, so if you like them please go and check them out. I hope you found the video helpful and it's inspired you for your next painting. Hopefully, all the information that I've given you has earned a like and subscribe. I do really appreciate it. And if you'd like to see a completed Procreate painting using the exact same techniques that I've talked about here, then check out this video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.